So, thank you very much for your nice introduction. And uh, in order to remember your faces, I take photographs because my memory is not MCP and uh, my memory is not more than two gigabyte. So, uh, only uh, this camera. Names, yeah, please ask. Uh, <laughs> I will ask you to write down all names. Well, today I would like to talk about uh, strongly correlated compound electronic structures by several uh, means. And uh, uh, nowadays, understanding of uh, detailed electronic structures is necessary for wider application uh, in Ubiquita society, as you know. And in addition to many uh, typical uh, uh, stories, uh, the strongly correlated electron systems are ni nowadays attracting wider attention. Then the question is how to study the uh, electronic structures of SKS, strongly correlated electron system. Then uh, there are several uh, approach to study the electronic structures. One is photon spectroscopy. Photon spectroscopy is bulk sensitive. And one can study from terahertz region up to X-ray region. So 10 millivolt up to 10 kilovolt. Absorption and uh, uh, photo, uh, uh, emission, photon emission can be uh, utilized for this purpose. And uh, today I will talk about resonant in elastic X-ray scattering. The another approach is electron spectroscopy. Uh, this is, uh, however, surface sensitive, as you know. And the photon energy used is from 5 EV up to 10 kilovolt in most cases. So uh, today I will talk about photoelectron spectroscopy, but of course inverse photoemission could be done also. And scanning tunneling spectroscopy is also a very uh, nice technique. And other uh, uh, means, magnetic, electrical, thermal uh, experiment could be used to uh, study the electronic structures. But momentum information is only available by uh, this re resonant X-ray scattering and uh, photoelectron inverse photoemission techniques. Then whole content of my talk is arranged like this. Uh, first, I will talk about hard X-ray photoemission spectroscopy. And uh, uh, why this uh, technique is uh, inevitable for studying the bulk electronic structures and how the shapes of photoelectron spectra changes as a function of the photon energy. And some application is talked on the valence fluctuation and the heavy fermion systems. Then in the latter half of my talk, I will address the metal insulator transition, record effects, and extremely low energy, low energy photoelectron spectroscopy, and uh, uh, leaks, soft X-ray leaks. And finally, I will talk about spin polarized photoelectron spectroscopy. Then, uh, uh, why the bulk electronic structures should be known in the case of strongly correlated electron systems? This is because two physical quantities, on-site coulomb, uh, on uh, coulomb repulsive energy U and bandwidth W, this ratio U over W is uh, quite decisive to realize either itinerant or localized electronic structures. On the surface, the, since the numbers of the nearest neighbor atoms is uh, fewer, always W becomes smaller. So U over W becomes larger on the surface and electronic structure becomes less itinerant on the surface. So, no chance to stark electronic structures in the case of strongly correlated systems. Therefore, we go to the higher energy photoemission like soft X-ray or hard X-ray region. However, there is a difficulty in the hard X-ray photoemission. That is a photoionization cross-section. This is a logarithmic order, and this is a photon energy. The uh, <coughs> Photoionization cross-section goes down five orders of magnitudes from 100 dB to 10,000 dB. So hack space is more than 1,000 times more difficult than the conventional photoelectron spectroscopy as far as you want to have a 
comparable energy resolution. Okay? Therefore, we are utilizing 27 meter long planar undulators in spring 8. So he, there, the uh, numbers of undulator period is 780. So photon flux is almost 1,000 times stronger. Without using this, one cannot do the high resolution photoelectron spectroscopy. The details of this uh, beam line is given in this literature. So this is a, a undulator photograph of the undulator, which is uh, 30 meters long, and first order harmonic and third order harmonics are rather strong. And one can cover from uh, 7 kilovolt up to 25 kilovolt or something like that. Then we are also using the uh, high energy uh, photoelectron analyzer. We are using MB scientific analyzer, which has the uh, stability of 8 millivolt at 8 kilovolt. And uh, this is a Fermi surface of the gold, which is measured at 17 degrees Kelvin. And the energy resolution is around 55 millivolt uh, at 8 kilovolt. The energy stability, reproducibility for a day is 20 millivolt, better than 20 millivolt. Okay. Uh, but not only this uh, hard X-ray uh, photo emission beam line, we are also using soft X-ray beam line. But anyway, I would like to briefly explain about the history of Spring 8. Around uh, 1990, 1990, uh, Spring 8 project was funded by uh, uh, 1,300 million dollars. And uh, nowadays, uh, our annual uh, budget is 100 million dollars per year. Then uh, this is project is going to be funded. I moved to Osaka University from Tokyo University because to join the research activity in Spring 8. And I was the first chairman of the Spring 8 Beamline Committee. So uh, this committee decided to construct uh, four beamlines, and among which uh, the committee members asked me to construct the world best soft X-ray beamline, although I hesitated because it's very risky. So I didn't want uh, to, to accept this offer, but as a chairman, many uh, members asked me to do it. So I decided to do. Uh, this uh, soft X-ray beamline is uh, successfully constructed, and it was the world best uh, soft X-ray beamline until 2010. And the first user was Professor Kirshner from uh, Berlin Freie Universität, and uh, we collaborated in, in the field of PIN. Nowadays, the world best uh, soft X-ray beamlines are beamline 23SU, which my former student constructed, and address Swiss light source and diamond, as far as I have visited and seen the performance. So uh, now this uh, beamline 25 SU, which I constructed, is number five beamline in the world. So uh, in the case of the uh, so this soft X-ray beamline, we are utilizing the varied, uh, varied line spacing plane grating which uh, we developed by ourselves. And in this case, uh, by just rotating only this uh, grating with a, a co uh, not a constant pitch, but a varied pitch on the uh, surfaces, by rotating only this grating, we can cover the wide energy region. And uh, the energy reproducibility is around uh, 5 millivolt at 700 dV. And the highest resolution is 40 millivolt. Photon flux, photon resolution is 40 millivolt. And of course, we would like to realize better resolution, but due to the slope errors of the uh, surface, plane surface, this uh, 40 millivolt is the, uh, just a limit in all laboratories like address or uh, diamond. It is not possible to improve <coughs> rather than, than this. But still the uh, energy resolution is more than 2000. I don't like uh, less than 10,000. 10, uh, okay, the soft X-ray with the energy, total energy resolution of 50 millivolt is now feasible. 
at uh, beam line 23 and address beam line. Yeah. Now this is the experimental result which uh, proved that. <coughs> then next uh, subject is behavior of the probing depths. As I said already, around 100 EV, all the materials show the minimum uh, probing depths or mean free paths of photoelectrons. Therefore, in order to study the bulk electronic structures of SKS, we decided to move soft X-ray from 2000 EV, uh, 2000 uh, years, and uh, up to 10 kilovolt from uh, 2004. And uh, this uh, continuous increase of the mean free pass or probing depths is the merit of hack space. And in the field, in the case of uh, low photon energies, low kinetic energies, uh, mean free pass depends upon the individual materials. In some cases, it is bulk sensitive, and in some cases, surface sensitive. I know that criterion of that. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, then, then the, I would like to show you some examples of soft X-ray PES and hard X-ray PES. In the case of uh, sodium compounds and also uh, ytterbium samarium compounds. Anyway, I, I invested um, most efforts in soft X-ray PES from 2000 to 2005 or seven, And after uh, 2004, I am... Uh, also, uh, investing my energy to hard X-ray photo emission. Uh, this is a result of uh, two typical sodium compounds. Uh, this upper, upper one is, uh, oh, sorry. Oh. Upper materials is a heavy fermion system with a condo temperature as low as 20 degrees Kelvin. And the lower one is a uh, valence fluctuation system with a condo temperature of 1,000 degrees Kelvin. But when the uh, people studied uh, this uh, setting for F state as a resonance photo emission technique, the results were rather similar to each other. As you see, uh, 4D4F resonance provided double peak structure in both cases. So these uh, experimental results, photo emission, were much different from the uh, bulk electronic properties. But several or many theoreticians uh, analyzed this data and uh, made some discussions. But uh, such uh, theoretical work were wrong. And we did uh, hard X -ray, uh, not hard, soft X-ray photo emission at uh, 900 EV. Then both materials have shown much different uh, spectral shape. And this one shows the band kind, band structures. And this one shows the tail of the condo resonance peak and spin orbit satellite. So this result is fully consistent with the uh, bulk electronic structures. And we published it in 2000. And uh, if uh, one does the uh, layer ask systems uh, photo emission at low photon energies, like 100 dV, then the, uh, in the case of ytterbium, 4F bulk state is so weak, and this uh, large hump is coming from the surface. So how to analyze this? Well, they analyzed this one as assuming the some con impurity state in addition to the bulk state and surface state. But this kind of analysis is too much arbitrary and not reliable at all. So we decided uh, to do the photo emission at 700 EV, then such a strong uh, surface state is much suppressed. And uh, we can recognize very sharp uh, bulk electronic structures. And this is a result already obtained around 2005. Although I don't say that this is fully bulk sensitive, but it is much more bulk sensitive than the conventional photo emission around 100 EV. Then I move to the hack space. The merit of hack space is we can even study the uh, core levels with bulk sensitivity. And uh, we did uh, the first experiment in uh, ESRF. 
together with uh, Blaikovic and Darera and uh, D. So we did a measurement uh, with modest uh, energy resolution at uh, 2.4 kilovolt and 5.5 kilovolt. So kinetic energy from of, for the photoelectrons from the core level is 900 dV and 4,000 4, dV. So you recognize the difference of intensity of the structure coming from the divalent ytterbium 3, uh, 2 plus. And this is coming from ytterbium 3 plus. So this difference is coming from the surface sensitivity. And in the case of this kinetic energy 900 dB, the spectral weight is dominated 85% of bulk and 15% of surface. But in the case of 4,000 dV, 95% are coming from the bulk. So, Hux space is very, very powerful to study bulk electronic structures. It is experimentally clarified. So, we uh, studied uh, the samadium, uh, uh, samadium, osmium, and timonide scutteldide. This is known as a heavy fermion system. But however, when one measures the absorption, 3D absorption spectral shape, there is a hump B in addition to the uh, absorption spectral shape dominated by the trivalent samarium in samarium for arsenic-3. So this is due to the mixed valence feature. So, divalent feature is observed in addition to the trivalent feature. In addition, we did a hack space. In most cases, in the samarium, ytterbium, sodium systems, when the photon energy becomes higher, the divalent component becomes smaller. In most cases, 90% of the earth compounds the divalent component is related to the surface state and it becomes weaker at higher photon energies. But in this uh, scutteldite uh, systems, it became stronger. So this means it is really mixed balance in the bulk. So bulk is mixed balance and heavy fermion. So both uh, features are coexisting in this system. So, Hux space is really, uh, really powerful if it is combined with the soft X-ray photo emission. We did other measurement of the mixed crystals, yeah? By introducing uh, rutetium into ytterbium system, the uh, 4F coherence between ytterbium 4F state is interrupted. So the lattice coherence or 4F electron coherence is broken. Then, both uh, spectra, pure spectra and uh, <coughs> mixed crystal <coughs> spectra <coughs> shows different temperature dependence. Although I don't uh, talk too much about the results, but the result of uh, mixed crystals, this blue data, is well explained by a single set of uh, parameters, calculation one. This is a 4F electron energy position, correlation energy, 4F conduction band hybridization. This data set is possible to explain all the result in the mixed crystal. But the result of pure sample, ytterbium boron 12, this red result is never explained by the continuous curve, this one, which means the single input Anderson model or non-crossing approximation calculation applied to analyze the 4F electron state is not applicable to the uh, 4F coherent system. So periodic Anderson model theory should be applied to such a system. Not only in this case, but also it will be aluminum free too. So if uh, there are any theoreticians in this group, audience, please do such a calculation for the help of experimentalists. Yep. Okay. 
Now I have finished half of the uh, presentation and now go to metal insulator transition. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, the uh, anagium dioxide is a typical MIT system with a 3D1 uh, electron. In this case, uh, MIT temperature is 340 degrees Kelvin. And crystal structure changes between metal and insulators. As I said, the uh, photoionization cross-section is five or six orders of magnitude smaller than the uh, uh, conventional photo emission at 100 dB. We opened the slit to 250 millivolt, and we measured the vanadium 3D state. This is the uh, vanadium uh, 2P core levels. And in the case of uh, insulators, fair the dimerization between vanadium Vanadium takes place in the insulator phase. Then core level is very sharp. When temperature is increased and it becomes metal, then this structure becomes broader. This uh, broader structure is coming from the metallic screening induced by the carriers near the film level. This is a, a result for the uh, VO2, which I have mentioned already, and V6O11, V5O9. And V5O9 doesn't show any dimerization. No approach of two ne nearest neighbor vanadium atoms. But V6O11 shows partial dimerization and VO2 shows the full dimerization. Let's uh, uh, look at the uh, vanadium 1S and uh, vanadium 2P core levels. In the insulator phase, insulator phase is always a single peak. And when it becomes uh, uh, to V6011 or V509, it becomes at least two components. This is nothing to do with the dimerization, but related to the uh, valence fluctuation, because the valence is no more V4+. Plus. This is, these structures are coming from uh, valence mixing. And the structure in the metal phase is again due to the metallic screening. Um, what is very interesting is the spectral shape of V6O11 with a partial dimerization is well reproduced by adding the spectra of V5O9 without dimerization and VO2 with dimerization. If we add 15% contribution of dimerization spectra, the spectral shape of V6O11 is fully reproduced. So dimerization effect is now clarified by uh, bulk sensitive uh, photo emission. How about the metal insulator transition uh, on the valence band? This is a uh, valence band uh, spectra in the metal phase and the insulator phase in uh, six different vanadium oxide. Okay, uh, in the metal phase, of course, the uh, Fermi level is uh, cut it by some finite intensity. And the insulator phase, uh, strong peak is shifted toward deeper binding energy. But this peak is not due to the lower Hubbard band. Lower Hubbard band is located around 1.5 or 1.6 EV. Okay? This is directly related to U. And although this uh, lower Hubbard band intensity is much weaker than other photo emission, like conventional photo emission or soft X-ray photo emission, this is quite reasonable because soft X-ray photo emission is still surface sensitive, therefore more localized state is observable in the lower Hubbard band region. But in the hack space, it is bulk sensitive, so the uh, bulk has less intensity of lower Hubbard band. Anyway, the dimerization uh, induces a deeper position of the lower Hubbard, uh, no, this uh, quasi-particle band coherent uh, component in the deeper binding energy region. So, correlation-assisted piles transition model by uh, Behrman et al. is supported fully by this uh, complete set of data. 
And in the case of V2O3, there are three uh, phases, paramagnetic metal, paramagnetic insulator, antiferromagnetic insulator. We have measured uh, these three phases by Huxpes and found out the lower Hubbard band is always present in the same binding energy. So this is uh, 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 proving that U is constant through this system across the metal insulator transition. And only the critical U over W is changed with temperature. So such a long-standing controversy is now also solved. Then Hack space is bulk sensitive. Okay, fine. Hack space is possible, as reported by Chuck Fadre. Okay, fine. Then can one then always employ Hax RPS for bulk fermiology? The answer is no. Because it depends upon the recoil effect. Recoil effect means when the electron is photo emitted from the nucleus or atoms, then this momentum is uh, transferred to the uh, nucleus. Now this nucleus recoils back. Therefore, this uh, photoelectron energy is shifted to smaller kinetic energy. Uh, this shift in the simple model is proportional to the electron kinetic energy times mass ratio, electron mass divided by nucleus mass. Okay? This is the simplest uh, picture of the record effect. And uh, in the case of uh, ethylbium hexabolite, we measured one scan uh, at uh, 8 kilovolt and 700 dB. In the case of ethylbium 4D, there is no record shift, but in the case of boron 1S, Record shift is as large as 300 millivolt. Why record is in solids? It is answered in this paper, in my paper. But anyway, this simple model provides you this kind of large record shifts. As far as your energy resolution of the system is better than this, you can see the record shift in some cases, not always. In the case of lithium V204, this is a heavy fermion system below to 20 degrees Kelvin. Huxpress was performed at 20 degrees Kelvin. Then the lithium minus shows the record shift up to 530 millivolt. It's very large. Yeah? And even in the case of oxygen minus, record shift is 230 millivolt at low temperatures, not high temperatures. Yeah? This system has a they by temperature of around uh, 400 degrees Kelvin. Okay. Even in the uh, valence band, one can recognize the record shift up to 120 millivolt. This valence electron is extended all over the crystal. So it can interact with the nearest neighbor atom. If a momentum is shared by the nearest neighbor atoms, then record shift must be negligible. But it isn't. It is finite. And this magnitude is between the record shift of oxygen and the vanadium. This can be only understood by the weighted sum of the vanadium 3D and oxygen 2P contribution in the valence band near the Fermi level. So 34% of the valence band near the Fermi level is coming from the oxygen 2P state. This is my conclusion. And uh, you can recognize that the high energy photoelectron can be uh, strongly oscillating in the space, yeah? Since the kinetic energy is very large. But in the case of initial state, valence band electron state may be quite uh, smoothly uh, oscillating between this uh, nucleus or atoms. But according to the Ash Ashcroft and Mamid's textbook, it oscillate very rapidly due to the uh, uh, co-electron potential in the vicinity of the nucleus. So rapidly oscillating initial state and rapidly oscillating final state has a large matrix element in the vicinity of the nucleus and can show the uh, record shift. Okay, this is a simple explanation. Of course, one can theoretically analyze it. However, even though the uh, uh, vanadium and oxygen is included, in the case of a metallic phase of VO2, 
No record shift is observed, as you see here. So the atomic configuration is very similar between uh, lithium V2O4 and VO2, but in this case, record shift is clear, and in this case, no record shift. The reason is in internucleus distance is much longer, yeah? Five percent longer in uh, this system than VO2. Of course, more detailed theoretical analysis is required, but fundamentally speaking, this uh, nuclear, nucleus distance and also the spring constant is a decisive factor to provide whether the record shift is observable or not. So this uh, record shift is measured uh, also by nitrogen oxide, and it depends upon the uh, compound. And if uh, we uh, apply the similar discussions, we can evaluate the uh, partial density of state of oxygen near the Fermi level in these materials. But here, uh, another example is shown in the case of superconductor V3 silicon with TC of 70 degrees Kelvin. Record shift was clearly observed on silicon 2P, but not observed vanadium 3P. What may be in the case of valence band? So record shift is observed, but no rigid shift. What's the reason why? This is due to the fact that the silicon P density of state is increasing. Not constant around the Fermi level, but increasing a little bit to have the deeper binding energy region. Then, depending upon the relative weight between uh, silicon 2P and vanadium 3D, this record shift increases as a function of binding energy. The details are given in this paper. And uh, soon, when I go back to Japan, I will measure the temperature dependence and polarization dependence of this record behavior. So, LFS. Extremely low energy photoemission is possible in laboratories without synchrotron facility. Very sorry, but uh, without it, it is possible. And uh, uh, this is a hack space of uh, a magnetite. And as I said, this uh, transition metal 3D is very weak, but we can do the better statistics, although not satisfactory, but the uh, fairway transition is 100 to 23 degrees Kelvin, and even above the, uh, this Fermi transition, it is insulator. So Fermi transition is insulator to insulator transition. And by measuring by uh, LFS at uh, 7.5 eV, again, 140 millivolt is insulator, and density of state at Fermi level gradually increase as a function of temperature. So insulator, insulator transition, is uh, established in magnetite. And empirically found for LFS are, LFS are bulk sensitive. Fan density of state near the Fermi level are low. This may be the most cases for SKS with gap opening, means insulator phase. But in the case of uh, metallic phase of V2O3, for example, it is surface sensitive. And in the case of ethereum metal, surface sensitive. Okay? So one should be very careful uh, to discuss the bulk sensitivity. And in the case of a kappa 111, for example, there is no bulk state. Then one can be, oh, sorry, sorry, very sorry. In that case, one can see the surface electronic states. And also in the case of topological insulator, since there is a gap, then one can see the surface state, surface they are calm. So some theoretical work is expected for fully understand this kind of uh, results. And uh, I will skip this subject, uh, this uh, interface state between LAO and STO. Yeah? In this case, uh, anyway, uh, due to the resonance photoemission, one can see the uh, Fermi surface in the two-dimensional uh, brilliant zone. And some model is supported by experiment. And this explains, uh, hmm, time limitation, actually. Is it okay? Okay. 
Uh, then uh, I would like to talk about the soft X-ray Rix. And beforehand, I would like to uh, talk about what is Rix. Rix is photon excitation is done from the occupied state to the unoccupied state. Uh, then finally, it is uh, emitted like uh, photons by exciting the interband excitation. So by measuring the inelastic uh, energy loss, one can prove this uh, interband excitation as a function of momentum. Uh, we uh, did the hard X-ray uh, leaks in uh, two systems, edge sharing kappa O and the corner sharing kappa O. And details are given in this uh, reference, but anyway, by changing the uh, momentum, momentum, yeah, which means uh, by changing the sample uh, angles and detectors angles, one can scan the brilliant zone region. Then uh, dispersion of the uh, interband excitation is clearly observed. And from here, we can discuss about the lower Hubbard band, upper Hubbard band excitation, or bonding state, anti-bonding state excitation, and so on. So, uh, last subject is a spin polarized photoelectron spectroscopy. And there are four uh, kind of detectors. MOT detectors, mini-MOT detectors, tungsten lead detectors, v lead detectors of uh, iron oxide. Although I used the tungsten lead detector around 30 years ago, I stopped it to use it because of the too low efficiency. But uh, this time, I'm still again using uh, V-lead and uh, enjoying the life. But anyway, uh, my preference is a V-lead of uh, ion oxide uh, spin detector, which has uh, at least 100 times more efficiency than other spin detectors. And also the... Uh, Surface screening is uh, not necessary in this case. One can use it for weeks or months without uh, refreshment. And in this case, uh, one must uh, refresh every half hour or two hours. And uh, uh, for the old people like me, it is tedious. And the uh, spin detector made of iron oxide is uh, located here. And the advantage is by applying the magnetic field, we can change the spin selectivity by this uh, iron oxide detector. So without changing the uh, kinetic energy of photoelectrons, we can determine the uh, spin polarization. And the figure of merit is, uh, as I said, one almost two times 10 to the minus two, which is uh, twice better than the uh, iridium detector and 100 times better than tungsten D. And uh, we have applied uh, this uh, detector to samarium hexabolide system because samarium hexabolide is uh, uh, condo insulators. When temperature is going down, then gap opens here. And now people uh, uh, has theoretically predicted that there should be a Dirac cone in this gap. And you know the uh, nowadays the photon energy of the uh, xenon krypton lamp is better than 600 microelectron volt, and laser is better than 300 microelectron volt, which is realized in Japan. And uh, <clears throat> we have such facilities. And uh, this uh, shows the uh, gap, the condo gap near the Fermi level. And although there is no state inside this. Uh, uh, angle integrated photo emission, people are discussing about the Dirac cone state. So we did, uh, RPS, spin RPS by use of, uh, iron oxide detector, and, uh, this is spin polarization for, uh, circularly polarized light and sigma plus and sigma minus circularly polarized light. And this is for linearly polarized light. And in the case of linear polarization, no spin polarization is observed, and in circular polarization, Spin polarization uh, is observed and opposite for the different polarization. So uh, although we couldn't see the uh, linear light uh, excited spin polarization, so Dirac was not confirmed, but we had a very nice result that in order to see the uh, Dirac state, if possible in this region, one should use fully unpolarized light excitation or fully linearly polarized excitation. If once 
1%, 2% of the circular polarization light is present, then there's no chance to see the uh, Dirac cone spin polarization. In this case, uh, the total energy resolution was set to 50 millivolt, but for the uh, uh, Dirac cone state uh, probe uh, in some other hexabolite, we should reduce the energy resolution down to 10 millivolt. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I, I'm now working in uh, Eretra by use of nano -ESCA. And nano -ESCA combined with 2D spin detector is the uh, future uh, main, uh, main uh, methodology in solid state physics. So I decided to stay in solid state physics for the next 10 years as a gel experimentalist. Also, once I decided to retire, but uh, it's so interesting. So these are my uh, uh, collaborators. Uh, hmm? Hmm? What's the matter? It doesn't go back. Hmm? Hmm? No. It doesn't work. Can you go down? Yeah. Go back, this one. Yeah. Uh, these are collaborators from uh, Max Planck Hare, and uh, these are collaborators from Jurich and uh, uh, Eretra. And this is myself, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> in this case, in the case of samadium hexabolite, really speaking, some uh, interesting dispersion is present here, and also some dispersion is here, but it does disappear within two hours. So the ultra high vacuum in 10 to the minus 11 minibar is required, and high energy resolution better than 20 millivolt is required, and short measuring time with use very high efficient spin detector is necessary. So I will do this uh, experiment again in Hare with use of uh, Elysium spin detector in October. I'm not sure whether I may succeed or not, but uh, perhaps 80% I may succeed. And prospect. Uh, this is a prospect, and uh, the point is a uh, combination of Hackspace, SXRPS, and RPS, and soft X-ray uh, is very important. This is a mainstream of solid state uh, physics in the future. And full utilization of uh, circular and linear polarization will be very helpful. And in the Hackspace, High resolution resonance hack space is now possible, yeah, in many facilities. And then combined with the uh, momentum spectrometer types spin uh, analyze, analyzers, one can do spin hacks arpes may become possible soon, or I should make it feasible in my life, yeah. So, uh, in addition, K-resolved RICS and SXP RICS and uh, perturbations may combine with this system. Then we can study all materials, not only magnetic materials, but all solid state materials. And in the micrometer region may become possible. So that's my dream and maybe uh, feasible. And my philosophy and dream, uh, I put it is by use of the world best instrument and world best samples challenge the frontier of science. Yeah. So my colleague may have listened to that several times. Please upgrade these laws continuously. Never stop. An international collaboration basis is necessary because one can get simulating idea from different cultures. Yeah. Thinking method is much different. And uh, all knowledge, all know-how established should soon be open to public, okay? After establishing his or her intellectual propriety rights, not keep it secret. Then this field doesn't progress at all, and it feedback to his or her activity itself. Popularization of such techniques may save possible waste of national budget or world budget and natural resources of all human beings. 
And most important is training of next generation scientists is important. So, senior scientists must encourage the next generation scientists. And please enjoy your life beside your job on science.